16-year-old Nathan Ibanez is in a blackout rage, beating a woman with a fireplace poker. The victim, his very own mother, Julie. In the middle of the mayhem, Nathan's best friend, Eric Jensen, walks through the front door. He went over that night to look after for his friend because he was very afraid that something horrific was going on in the house because of this history of abuse. Eric is in shock and races to Nathan's bedroom to escape the horror. When Eric walks back out, Nathan puts plastic over his mother's head and chokes the life out of her bloody body. Eric never raised a hand to Nathan's mother, but he now sits in prison, sentenced to life without parole. He was faced the same charges and the same penalties as if he had actually killed the victim himself. We didn't understand it, didn't under still don't to this day. Eric Jensen, a freckled-faced kid, born into wealth and the unconditional love of his mom and dad. What was Eric like as a boy? Well, he was very bright and precocious at an early age. To his family and friends, Eric is a sweet, sensitive young man from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, with a good future ahead of him. We encouraged in him from the time he was young was that he be a kind person and compassionate to other people. Maybe a little more sensitive to other people's problems than we had intended. <laughs> Nathan was one of Eric's friends with big problems. He claimed he was beaten by his father and sexually abused by his mother. Eric told his parents Nathan feared for his life the night he murdered his mother. According to Eric, Nate told him that they said they were taking him to military school, but really they were going to kill him on the way there. His he really believed were that. Gonna kill his parents were going to kill, kill him on the him. way there bury him in a cornfield somewhere, that's why he truly believed it. Nathan planned to run away that night with Eric's help. But when he gets home, Nathan finds his mother waiting. When she tries to stop him, rage erupts, and Nathan kills her. Then, Eric makes the biggest mistake of his life. He helps Nathan clean up after the murder. I've heard parents say, my kid would never do that. Well, yeah, they would. If their friends are there, if the peer pressure is there, your kids do things you would not believe they would do. Do you believe he did anything? He definitely aided and abetted in cleaning up the crime scene and, and doing some other things. He did not participate in actually killing this woman. At his trial, Nathan gets life without parole for murder in the first degree. Eric and his family expect serious consequences for his involvement in the crime, but they have no idea what is coming. Guilty of first degree murder. And the feeling was, this is impossible. This can't be happening. The prosecution agreed that Eric had not been the one that killed Julie, which is why we were all shocked at the end. I know what Eric is feeling on so many levels. Yes, I'm sure you do. And I'm glad, really glad that you're not there anymore. Thank you. Me too. Well, we got to continue to raise awareness so that people know that this is not OK to do to children. Yeah. You know. Thank you for sharing that with me. And even Eric himself was happy to take a call. Do you understand, like, um, Eric, why you helped clean up? I mean, at the time, I, I really just didn't want him to go to jail. Well, and if I have to help, then I will. But Eric says he doesn't see things that way today. And he has advice for others who might find themselves in the same situation. Like, I remember feeling like nobody was going to help us, like nobody was going to help him. Mm -hmm. My immediate advice and, like, heartfelt advice would just be, uh, you know, you're not helpless, you're not alone. Uh, you have a chance and you have a choice. And even though it doesn't feel like that because when you're this age, ev everything feels like, like there's no way out. But there just might be a way out for Eric now. The United States Supreme Court recently ruled against life without parole sentencing for minors. Attorney Allison Rutenberg says that some states like Colorado have been slow to implement the ruling, but she remains hopeful. I still put his chances at really good. He's the type of person that can be rehabilitated rather than a type, the very unusual type of juvenile offender that we do need to keep locked up for the rest of their life. I definitely think that I deserve to come to prison. Um, like there's, there's no part of me that thinks that I should have got a slap on the wrist. I don't think that having a life sentence is the appropriate way to do that. 
Meanwhile, Eric has kept himself busy staying out of trouble and earning a college degree while behind bars. I have to meet the people who are trying to help me out of here halfway at least. Like your parents, right? <laughs> exactly. You know. Right. Yeah, you know, they're they're out there sacrificing their their money, their time, their effort, and you know, their their lives to get me out. If I'm not doing the same in order to get myself out, then uh, I'm really betraying them. And Eric's mom is ready to take it a step further, a few steps actually. I'm sure you envision Eric home with you, you guys doing something after he gets out. Okay. I want to have a party okay, and have uh, or go someplace where they're playing music that we can actually do a waltz at and I dance. want him to dance with me. <laughs> and he will. And he will. And he, he won't will. like it, but he will. <laughs> he may love it. <laughs> I just, you know, I can hear the music in my head.